Welcome to the Assess Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Schwartz, and joining me today is former teammate, longtime friend now. It's, it's, it's been, a, been some years. Uh, great guy. Awesome to see you all the time. Matt Ciccone. Matt, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Did I pronounce your name correctly? I feel like I always mess it up. No, you're fine. Okay, good. I'm doing good. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm surprised we haven't done one of these yet because I think uh, I feel like we talk about it all the time. We just never have the time to do it. I know. We never get together. So. Although, aside from the, the slight message appearances on the other podcasts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Goodness. Yes, on the, on the aforementioned companion. Yeah, now, now you're here in the flesh. Your voice is here. So, a uh, little intro. You go to the Ohio State University. I want to talk about that. because I, Did you hear about this? No. That, that your school was trying to trademark the word the. Oh, I did hear about Dude, that's so stupid. Honestly, like, I don't get what the whole thing is with the the. Like, whatever. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but. Yeah, it, it never made sense to me either because, like, every – place usually has the word the in front of them because that's kind of how it works that's how right. english works <laughs> but no I, I saw that i just wanted to ask you okay uh you are a chemical engineering major correct is that still your track yep still doing that business minor so yeah so you don't want to be a uh, straight like in the lab organic chemistry synthesis crap that you learn about in class you you kind of want to be more the business side working on you know like engineering contracts stuff like that right yeah something like that i just don't want to be a lab rat basically yeah i feel like labs really tough labs like you need to be a certain kind of animal because i i you go in there for like three hours at a time you know the science labs are like i'm at the end of three hours i'm like this is miserable (laughs) like yeah and like the same shit and like just seeing people work in the lab, it's like the one um, – it's not like shadowed in a lab. And they're like, oh, well, like something went late, so we had to start this test late. So now I have to come in at uh, 1 a.m. on Saturday night to come switch the samples. And I'm like, uh, really? Like you have to come in? They're like, yeah, like, we got to take the data from the test, and that's the hour mark. So I'll be in here. <laughs> it's like that is not for me. I'm not doing that shit. Yeah, no, I, I like data. Like, I like looking at that kind of stuff. You know this. We've uh, we've talked about some different, like, math models and stuff like that. I like that, but the actual sitting there and, like, running all those samples and all stuff like that, yeah, you're right. That's just – I can't sit there and, like, all right, so uh, we, we put this in, and now we're going to wait for six hours, and I'm just going to sit here. And, like, I, I, I can't I can't yeah. do that, or I don't have the patience for that either, too, is the other thing. So. Yeah, definitely a big patience thing. Yeah, so – Okay, that makes sense. Much more social side of engineering. Definitely. Uh, what else do you like to do on campus? I, I know the answer here. You are you're <laughs> in a fraternity. I was gonna. I was joking with Katie before. I was like, I, I'm gonna ask Matt just to defend fraternity life in in complete. But I won't do that. Um, I mean, fraternities have a bad that. rep nowadays. Yeah, they do. So you don't need to get into specifics to anything, but like. I know your your fraternity is not bad. I like I know you live in the house, but like, and I think there are definitely still a lot of you know good ones. And at some schools, it's really different. I know here, um, it's only I think like ten twelve percent of people of the student population are in fraternities. And I know up in Ohio, it's a lot more because I think frankly, uh, us both being from there, that there's not that much to do. You know, there's not. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't think we're much more than that. I think we're like. 21 if i had a guess i think it'd be like 21 really that's because i know yeah. like i feel like miami uh miami ohio is like a ton they're like 70 but that's like a whole like miami is frats like there's nothing else there yeah like, if you're not in a frat it's like what are you doing with your life you know right yeah yeah that's true and that's definitely like we played soccer there before it's definitely the vibe you get yeah i mean it's the middle of cornfields like <laughs> yeah, that's where that's where i grew up all right Ridge Tucky, baby. Not near yeah. Miami, but Corn Festival every year. <laughs> <laughs> Second weekend in August. No, so um, you 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 rushed your freshman year, right? Yeah, spring. Okay, so like w- what? Spring, Obviously, yeah. you've made a uh, lot of friends, a lot of connections. I know, and you you have a lot of fun. Um, like, what, what's the biggest thing? Like, 
doing a fraternity, rushing a fraternity, you know, being in one, that, like, people crap on in the news and whatever. I know we, we you and I have texted and talked about how the media is a bunch of crap anyway. Yeah. But, like, wh- what's the biggest thing you think it's a misconception that it's, like, out there, I guess, right now? I mean, people are all like, oh, they're all bad, they're all rude, they're all mean, they're all animals. And it's like, yeah, I mean, there are, like, some that are like that, and you just, like, don't talk to those, like those frats and it's like you know who those are and you know what they're about and there's like a lot that i don't want to say there's a lot that you don't see but like the media just highlights all the bad things that happen which like that's the same aspect for anything though so like you'll never see all the any good coming out of it from the media side which i mean obviously there is a lot of good that comes from it and like you make great connection and and make great friends and everything and that's really what it's about it's like the whole like brotherhood thing yeah i feel like uh you know obviously the media like anything that's traumatic and dramatic combined you know they're on that and like obviously whenever a a college kid dies or something like that you know no matter what it is or just anything you know like you said anything it's like that um and of course college is a perfect place you know for that kind of stuff to happen because it's like you know you get a bunch of 19 20 year olds and i mean stuff can go wrong but that that that's anywhere you know um mm-hmm. it, it, and it's just like i mean you're dealing with a lot of other stuff too you know right. with all these you know drugs that are going on and all this stuff too on these campuses that's insane really i mean all this 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 fentanyl stuff yeah it is i mean the the city i grew up in next to it it's it's Elyria. they they've had a bit of a heroin issue for a while and it's just like, you know, you start putting fentanyl on this, and it's like, it's it's insane. Yeah, it's so bad. So I, I read about, like, the it's an opioid that's, like, 20-something times the strength of heroin. Yeah. And now they put it in heroin, right? Like, heroin, yes. cocaine. <laughs> yeah, and I know people uh, cut their coke with fentanyl, which is just disgusting. So like, what does that that's mean? That's so dangerous. But cutting coke? Yeah. Oh. Like... You know, you have pure Coke. And it's basically diluting it. You cut it with something. So, like, if someone's trying to cheap you, they'll, like, cut their Coke with, like, baking powder because it looks like Coke. So, oh. you, like, and you just dilute it. But, like, people do it with fentanyl because it, like, apparently, like, gives more of a high or something. I have no idea. But, like, I mean, that's, like, what I've heard coming just, like, rumors and shit and stories. And, like, that's what people do. And, like, of course, there's those jokes where it's like, oh, like, this guy cuts coke with fentanyl. And it's like people joke about it, but it's like like that's pretty serious, actually, if someone actually did that, you know? Yeah, well, that's what I think, like, I think you're right because that's the only way that makes sense to me because fentanyl is killing so many people. And the only reason they would do it is if it gives a slightly better high. And, of course, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's if it's that strong, as I've read it is, like – I know. Yeah, so much more potent. Yeah, that basically, if you get it wrong by even a like a milligram or a little bit, you know, um, you're dead. And I mean, I don't know. I don't want to speak to too many people, but for instance, I I was curious, so I clicked on the headline, or whatever. How long ago? I don't remember how long ago it was, but when Mac Miller died, because they're like mm-hmm. they they ran the tox report. Did you see what was in him? What when no, he died? I did. It no. was ethanol, cocaine, and fentanyl. So his fentanyl, his cocaine was laced. And he died. Yeah. Shit. And th- it's just crazy to me because, you know, I-, I feel like that's a buzzword too, you know. I mean, I'm going, pe- people know I've been listening to this, you know, I'm going to be a doctor going in the healthcare field. It's like a buzzword now. It's like the opioid crisis, blah, 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 you know, whatever. And like it's it's hard. And, you know, there's, there's the two tracks. You can do MD and DO. And that the, the stereotype is MDs just prescribe medicine for everything, including opioids. Mm-hmm. And DOs, yeah. like, they don't, and they use um, their hands more, which is, you know, there's partial truth in that, but, you know, people talk, like, fentanyl's an opi- opioid, that's a thing, and it's just, it's crazy that everyone's just like, ah, we gotta, we gotta work on this opioid crisis, it's like, really, how are you gonna do that, how do you plan on doing that? Yeah, like, you're spewing that we need to, but it doesn't do anything, actually. It's yeah, and it, yeah it, it's, it, and especially, you know, as we get around to the next presidential, um, you know, election coming up next year, and it's just like, you, you know, you're going to hear about it more and more. And what's going to happen? Nothing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. I mean, they're all going to say, oh, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to go after Big Pharma. And no one's going to do shit. 
Yeah, but the, the big pharma it, one. You can't mess with their kickbacks. No one's gonna do shit. No, I know the, the big pharma one is 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 crazy to me too. Because it's just like, how are you really uh-huh. going to do that? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, uh, and, and like on. in uh, California, they don't have straws. No, no, they're straw free, but their streets are littered with needles, and they have to give out free needles. So, the problem is the straws, though. You know. Okay, I I try not to use plastic straws as much as possible. So, uh, but I mean that's fine. Like I'm just saying, like they're like, oh, we're saving the earth, we're straw free, but like there's needles just littering in streets. Yeah, like even on a waste scale, that's more than the straws they're using. Let alone the fact that there's heroin needles lining the streets. Like, <laughs> oh, what? Well, that's because you can get the drugs so cheap from Mexico. Probably, I guarantee it right there yeah i mean sanctuary city and like it's such a problem that they're giving out free needles because they want them to stop reusing needles and spreading wow i didn't didn't know that that's crazy yeah like what what city is that in is it just all like in the south in california yeah i know Uh, like san francisco and i assume la probably just the major cities in san francisco or in california apparently san francisco has like a poop app that you can see where humans like shit yeah, because it's all over the streets. That's what I've heard, too. Yeah, that's crazy to me. Yeah. Everyone says they want to live in California when they're older, and I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, maybe in, like, a vineyard, like, in uh, eastern California or something, but, like... Yeah, like, up near uh, up near the, the wilderness, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, my cousin just moved out there for his job, but mm-hmm. they're, like, away from the big cities, and they're in this, like, small little town, like, near a vineyard, actually. Like, that kind of area. It's, like, this small little town. And, like, he bought this house from this lady. And they're, like, a little bit removed from the town. And it's, like, really quaint and perfect. And he sends, like, videos of him, like, biking on, like, the co- um, just, like, biking, like, by mountains and stuff. And, like, going on hikes all the time. And it looks amazing. That's so, like, beautiful. that's the kind of California I would do. I feel like that's Colorado, no? But, like, colder, no, probably. California. Well, not, like, mountains, mountains, but, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. um, No, he's in... Yeah. I wanted to say something about the straws, too. So, Mm -hmm. I saw this headline a couple months ago, and it was talking about how in England it was, in in Britain somewhere, this elderly lady was walking with her drink. I don't know what it was. Um, She wasn't drunk. I heard about that, yeah. You heard about this? (laughs) And she tripped and fell... And um, her metal straw punctured her through her skull and killed her. She died. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the th- they said that the straw was like, I think it was one of those like tumbler cups, uh, but she put the metal yeah. straw in and it was locked in place. So there's no give. So it just went straight through. Right. So, I mean, for every turtle we save, right. there's one human life that. <laughs> yeah. I, and like it's just it's just crazy. I mean, of course it was reported on and went wide and went big news because yeah, you know, it was tragic, but I mean, my goodness. Yeah, yeah that's just like what? It's, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know like I know everyone freaked out about the straws, but the other thing is really the packaging and all of this stuff too because you know, yeah. I'm not necessarily, you know, a green freak not freak i don't want to say the word freak but like a really big like pushing on other people like green like i know people that will like if you're using a uh, reusable straw they'll look at you with like anger like you're killing the planet and so I'm not, I'm not that big but like you know i i, I try to do my own part in it you know like recycle mm-hmm. like I, and i i'm fully aware that my actions do not lead up i'm not i'm not sitting there you know when i refuse the straw from mcdonald's and i'm like nah no, i got mine yeah you know, i'm not like i just saved the turtle you're welcome i'm just like no nah, i just yeah. you know and, and honestly it's more convenient too not just having to throw it away and stuff so well i mean that's the thing is like you like want to do reusable straws like that's like fine like that's good and all and like my problem is with the people who are like I'm that righteous, like, oh, I'm better than you. I use a reusable straw. Like, you're killing turtles. And it's like, okay, like, you want to use a reusable straw, fine. Like, you do you, good for you. But, like, you don't have to, like, pressure me and, like, do all this, say all this shit to me for not using a reusable straw. Like, I, that's where my problem is. The worst are the, uh, uh, the, oh, you eat meat? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. 
There's some interesting stuff, though, there. Um, because I've heard the argument, I've talked about it before, that it's like the use of um, land to raise cows and chickens or whatever is very inefficient uh, yes. in its process. It, it compared to, like, if we were to put it with, you know, like, more energy uh, conducive things, you know? Which mm-hmm. is fair. However, I said, I've said this before, and I'll just, I think it's been long enough, I'll reiterate it. I don't think there are anyone, there are any seed companies out there going, all right, we're going to take this farm, we're going to buy the farm, and we're going to build an energy center yeah. for it. You know what so I mean? They're all saying, oh, this should be done to save the earth. And like, no, yeah, no one's going to do it. And but, second of all, is that going to be profitable for anyone to want to do it? So yeah, that's the other thing. So sure. have you uh, heard of the Impossible Burger? Yeah. So you'll appreciate this. It's a burger. It's meat. It's a, it's a burger, but it's not made with any beef. It's yeah. bacteria driven. Yeah. I haven't tried it yet, but that's crazy because, you know, bacteria can be used for so many things. I, I And I know there's probably some people listening that are like, oh, my God, bacteria is gross. It's like, look, you have more bacterial cells than human cells in your body. So mm-hmm. you can stop. But if you use them, you know, because they grow so quickly, obviously, uh, you can probably grow bacteria the size of a cow in a couple hours while a cow takes years to fully grow. Right. So I think that's interesting. The problem is, though, it's, you know, if you look at the menu when you're sitting there, um, it's four bucks more than a regular cheeseburger. Because they can. Well, I just think it's probably not in enough places yet to where they probably have to do that to even break even. Oh, uh, no, I think it's just because they can. I, mean, I could be wrong, but. So I think when that actually becomes like, you know, if that's the same price as a regular cheeseburger, I would buy that. I mean, if it, I've heard from a lot of people that it tastes just like the same thing. So, like, well, if, if there's a way, you know, because, you know, people, obviously, we've had a food issue in this world and in some parts of this country for a long time. And it's like, if we just get bacteria to make all our food, like, that's going to be, that's going to be the a driving innovation forever. Yeah. I mean, my opinion, I could be totally wrong on this, is that, like, their target audience is not the people who are, like, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd try that and see what it tastes like. It's the self-righteous people who are like, I'm saving the world, like, or like the vegans who are all like willing to pay. And like those type of people will be willing to pay more because it makes them feel so much better that they're buying that burger instead of a meat burger. So that's where I think the $4 price difference comes from is because they can. Yeah, and frankly, I haven't tried one yet because I'm not in the position to pay four extra dollars for a burger <laughs> than just the regular one <laughs> uh, right now. But I do think it's an interesting concept going forward that we look more of this. I mean, people have said that the next uh, computer kind of like boom that we had in the uh, 90s, early 2000s is, you know, like biotechnology like that. Uh huh. Like I've seen research about like building little – um, nanorobots that they're hoping can go in and just eat uh, eat up cancer cells, kill it all. That'd be cool. Or the same thing with like microplastics in the ocean. It's just crazy. Like those are the people that I look at. And I'm like, that's that's real work. That's insane because you're thinking of like such in depth ideas to to really fix this. Or like people that right. are working on. Uh, I know Max uh, has talked about this. Working on like carbon capture technology, where basically they just put something up. And it literally captures all of it. Like, that's that's insane. Yeah, that would... Like, all that stuff is just game-changing. Yeah, so I... I uh, my dad got me a subscription to Inc. So, like, reading all this stuff, it's really... Uh, yeah. That's what gives me hope. Because... Right. You know, because you, you go on Twitter and stuff, and you just have people fighting and and uh, and stuff like the, that. And it's, it's, it's tough. Yeah, the problem is, like, that gives you hope. That would give anyone hope. But... What is what is any type of media ever telling you? None of that because, like, honestly, they don't want you to have any hope. That's why I don't watch the news. Yeah, I don't watch it either. It, it just, just it just feeds on your want for sadness and to you know for I don't even know how to describe it, but like we're saying the same thing. Like it's just just it's always so bad. And yeah, there's sometimes where it's like. You watch it and it's it's interesting and there's certainly different stuff. Like I'm not saying I'm, I'm just ignorant to the whole world. I am off social media. Um, I know okay. you never were really on Twitter to start, so like it, it's just so it's, it, it's so bad. Yeah. yeah, my take is that if something happened that's important enough for me to because I don't watch the news, so 
or like or any form and like i don't follow news accounts on instagram or anything i get on twitter so like my thing is if something important enough happened that i should know about it someone's gonna tell me yeah I'm like hey did you see this did you hear about that and then i'll like no and they'll tell me and i'll or i'll look it up but like other than that it's all bullshit I, I also like I get the Washington Post like I get random notifications on my phone like from Apple News and stuff like that so I get those. Yeah, I don't even get those. My buddy sent me and I never used Apple News ever, and my buddy sent me like an article on it, and now I keep getting these fucking notifications. I'm like I don't know I don't want these like turn it off. It's like I don't care what the Kardashians did yesterday on Apple News like stop. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the the Kardashians are that's tough. Yeah. Oh, I dude, those people like the Kardashians, like they just, no, don't even get me started. <laughs> well, I didn't realize that they got famous off of the OJ trial. Yeah. I was, wa- I was watching it with, like, because yeah, the, uh, Rob, right? I don't know. What, I don't know his name. But yeah, because... Uh, I was watching the OJ trials on Netflix with Katie, and yeah, I was like, oh, that's Kardashian, whatever. And they're like, yeah, that's this is how they got famous. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah, because he was the lawyer, yeah. But he didn't even, like, If did you see the OJ trials? No, I didn't. I heard it was a very faithful adapta- adaptation. They really put their time into it. Um, uh-huh. But, like, he, he didn't really, I mean, he was OJ's friend, but outside of that, like, in terms of straight lawyering, you know, he didn't really do much, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't know. My biggest thing with them is everyone's like, oh my god, like, Kylie's a self-made billionaire. Self-made? Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. She she owns her own makeup line. You know what she did? Mom, I want a makeup line. And hired people, and they made a makeup line for her. Self-made, my ass. That's the farthest thing from self-made. Yeah, and I just want to say, like, I mean... Being a billionaire, whether you're self-made or not, like, you obviously had to put in some work. But, yeah, you're right. Like, when they're, like, self-made. No, uh, people run that shit for her. No way she has any clue at all what's going on with that. You, besides, you really like, think so? I just... test, oh, I yeah. I tested on the new makeup. I mean, she's the front of it. She tests out the new stuff. But there's no way she is involved in, like, anything day-to-day at all. Yeah, that's true. That's no true. No way. Not a shot. <laughs> I mean, if she is good for her, but yeah, you're probably right. Not a shot. <laughs> yeah. So, so how did they like the Jenners? I, I always forget how they even fit in. Do, do you know? Like, I sound really like stupid right now. There somewhere. I mean, like I know there is Bruce now, Caitlyn Jenner. Well, he was an Olympian, right? I, yeah, but I feel like they like someone got married into the they married the family somehow, right? The yeah. Jenner and Kardashian. Yeah. I think so. Maybe it's Rob Kardashian's wife or something. Is it? Is it Jenner? Yeah. Okay, we'll go with yeah, that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that does. I it just. It's one of those things that, like, you know, they're, they're they're still everywhere, and it's like I just I know all their names, obviously. I think, but like, if you if you showed me, you know, like if I were walking in L.A. and like saw Kim Kardashian, I'd be like, okay, like, I, yeah. they they have no like. Obviously, my priorities aren't as big as everybody else, but they just don't have any value to me. Yeah, no value at all. And what was up with the Kim K trying to get Trump to uh, release people from prison or whatever? I don't know. I didn't hear about that. I thought that it was a while ago. What happened? I thought, like, Kim Kardashian was trying to get oh, prison reform. Oh, yeah. I did hear about it. I don't know who they were trying to release. Oh, it was – um. No, what's his name? Me, ASAP. Yeah, ASAP. well, Trump tweeted about that one. I remember. Yeah, he was in jail. That's what it was about, right? He was in jail in fucking uh, wherever England or something. Maybe we're probably butchering this so bad that someone who actually pays attention to this stuff is like, "Oh my god!" Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just saw the tweet like, "Get home ASAP, ASAP." <laughs> I, I cannot believe that man and his his, his Twitter. It's. <laughs> It's so funny. It's the only so- reason he tweets half the shit he does is because he knows how explosive everyone reacts to anything he says. It's also the way he like tweets it too, because he'll just capitalize random words. <laughs> <laughs> because he can, and he thinks it's funny watching everyone freak out about a tweet. I'm still not sure if our president should be tweeting like that. 
No, I don't think so. But, but sometimes like, it's funny. Can you stop him? Like, no. He uh, just said, deal with it. And that's why I hate when people uh, react so much to his tweets. I'm like, dude, it's a tweet. Like, <laughs> it, it's just a tweet. It's yeah, not, t- not Twitter. Really. Twitter's rough because... I mean, like, you have a lot of accounts, you know, they'll get banned, you know, for hate speech or whatever like that, you know. Yeah. And you know who has a Twitter account? Who? OJ fucking Simpson. <laughs> he Dude, gets up there. About, um, wait, did you see the video? It was, like, OJ Simpson and, like, teaching Antonio Brown about, like, consent or whatever. It was, like, some instructional video that people had to watch. Oh, it was, Jesus. Like... <laughs> No, Katie didn't believe me. I don't think he's verified, but he has like a million followers. And he, they're all videos. We were looking through his feed. And it's like, hello, Twitter world. My uh, thoughts on the Ezekiel Elliott case is that, uh, yeah. you know, when I yeah. held out back in 19... And then there'll be like people under there. Oh, like, oh, yeah, you held out before you killed your wife. And it's like... <laughs> <laughs> right, like, <laughs> I saw one of those. It was so funny. You know, because Twitter, I think, had some issues with like banning stuff. Like banning people and stuff and like uh, trying to okay. filter. It's like... They let O.J. Simpson have an account. It's still up. Everyone knows he's there. Like, they're obviously not doing anything. <laughs> yeah. They don't yeah, care. Well, like, oh, well, we can't, like, stop, like, terrorism. We can't find them. We can't prove anything to, like, sen- silence their views and censor them beforehand. And meanwhile, like, they shut down conservative meme pages left and right. And it's like... You can find a conservative meme page and shut them down and jump through hoops to shut down their backup pages, but you can't find the dude tweeting, like, anti-Semitic shit or, like, like terrorism shit. Like, that, that's bullshit. Yeah, or just suspend his account or remove him, like... It's such bullshit. No, they're like, I we can't find that, like, we can't prove that, and, like, whatever. No, it's crap. And the problem is it's just getting more and more hardwired into our neural chemistry. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, there are studies now coming out with, like, how the dopamine releases and all this stuff, and it's it's just crazy that it, this has been so attached. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. I mean, if you go somewhere, you can't even, like, talk to people anymore. Like, it's it's – for some people, it's weird to talk to other people when that's, like, the most human thing you can do. <laughs> yeah. I, like – I hate that I'm on my phone so much. Well, when that uh, that screen time app came out, I started looking at it. That's when I got rid of Twitter and Instagram and whatever else. Yeah, yeah. Some of that though, it's like I get a thing like you're up twenty percent this week, and I'm like, yeah, but I had this certain thing. I, like make excuses. I was mm-hmm. like, that's stupid. Like, why am I? Am I making excuses? It doesn't make sense, you know. Well, my thing is like when I'm talking to someone on the phone because you know being down here like I, I make a lot of calls to people in ohio and stuff like that it's like your uh, time went up today and i'm like that's like come on like how does being on my f- like calling on the phone count like <laughs> right but yeah right. it's just certain apps like i still have snapchat but other than that um you know my apps are my texts and then like podcasts because i love listening to podcasts you know i, I right. love hearing other people uh, talk about things but other than that you know i'm not espn you know on like saturday like we were katie and i were at a, a, a like a um asian kick off the year assembly kind of thing all the asian organizations uh were there and it was pretty cool there's a lot of cultural uh-huh. dances um stuff like that and yeah. but of course i was curious about the ucf game um yeah, so. <laughs> yeah also, i'm looking at my screen time right now and it's like oh i'm up 15 minutes above average today and i'm like yeah but all i did was sit there and watch the bronze game and i was checking fantasy the whole time and yeah. like we were just like sitting watching the browns and like i guess you're like bound to be on your phone at that point you know yeah I'm, my fantasy is my second uh largest app this week down 30 percent from last week look at that it's because i napped yesterday <laughs> dude my fantasy i'm like Oh, that's not the fantasy app. I'm doing well right now. I'm shocked. It's my second time playing fantasy. And um, I like, I drafted well. I'm doing well. So I'm I'm pretty happy, actually. Although, this is weird because we're in a PPR league. But like the one time I played, it was a PPR where like every rush, not only reception, but every rush got a point as well. That's so weird. Were, like super overpowered. And, like, making my lineup, I forgot that running backs are, like, 
underpowered and receivers are overpowered in this league. So I had like three running backs instead of three receivers, and that bit me in the ass. But I'm still projected to crush him by 50 points. So that's awesome. I'm projected to, to lose by five right now. I I, uh, yeah. I won my league last year. Finally, I was that guy that would make the playoffs every year and lose in the semis. And like, but uh-huh. like, because you know me, I, I'm a big sports fan no matter what. So I know yeah. my stuff. So this year I was. <laughs> Uh, I picked Zeke. I had the fourth pick, so I ended up going with Zeke and like the whole contract thing. And I was like, "Oh God, here we go!" But he's yeah. obviously back, which is good. But um, the one guy in our league who picked Le'Veon Bell last year, number one overall, uh-huh. picked Antonio Brown this year. <laughs> well, he just got signed to the Patriots. He did, but like for there was a day, there was a yeah. pe- like the period of a day where we we're like, <laughs> "You suck." Yeah, but, dude, the one guy. Um, He's going to – it's going to be close, actually. He might win his game. But on his bench, he has Sammy Watkins, who got 46.8 points, Lamar Jackson with 33.6, and then some other guy with, like, 23.5, another guy with, like, 18 on his bench. Yeah, the person – actually, like, that's funny because the person in my league has both Sammy Watkins and Lamar Jackson on their bench. Yeah, like, <laughs> that sucks. Jeez. No. I was joking that I could already uh, quit on the Lions this year if they uh, if they lost, but, of course, they're winning, I think, 24-9. They're playing the Cardinals, so I guess oh, I, have yeah. to, I have to tune in. Are you are you a Browns fan? Dude, I was so depressed watching that game. Tough, oh my God. tough loss. 183 yards and penalties. Are you shitting me? <laughs> that, that was the total? <laughs> yeah, 18 penalties. The They're tied for second most penalties in franchise history. They surpassed 16, which was set in 1951. <laughs> that, that's incredible. So, we, for me... Like, <laughs> I can't. I'm so pissed. Living in Cleveland, but not being a Cleveland fan. You know, like... Maybe it's just because I'm there, you know, and maybe every other city's like this too when they're good. But, like, first is when the Cavs are really good. Mm-hmm. There are always people that are like... You know, we're taking down the Warriors, blah, 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 all this stuff. And, like, I know they won the one year, which yeah. went, the city went bananas. But, like, yeah. the other years, I think it was the first year of Kevin Durant. They're like, we're going to win. They're like, we got this. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, but, and then, obviously, like, some of the national people caught out, caught up with this, too, with the Browns this year. But uh, I was just texting the, my, one of my friends, and I was like, the Super Bowl was insane. Like, your odds were, like, the seventh highest or something, which is, like, I love Baker Mayfield. I I, I came on a, a show last year, and I was saying, Baker Mayfield's awesome. They should take him number one. I love Baker Mayfield, yeah. you know? People were questioning his um, his personality, that kind of stuff, after some of the stuff that happened in Oklahoma. I loved it. I, I And, you know, yeah. and Cleveland and Detroit are very similar cities, so, like, I'm like, he represents Cleveland very well. That's great, and he loves it. Yeah. But, you know, it's like... You make a couple acquisitions, and, and the thing that concerned me a bit uh, was, you know, first year head coach, and that's what penalties to me show this year. The yeah, head coach is fucking penalties. Uh, and that being said, I picked them to win the to go to the wild card, so I picked them to make the playoffs, which is still a big deal. But it's, mm-hmm. it, it seemed strange that everyone just it just like on this hype train that just went keep kept going. I mean, how bad was the loss? I didn't see the final score. I know they lost. It was like. 38 to 6 or something like that. Oh, my God. Hold on, I'm going to pull it up now. 43 to 13. Oh, my God. Yeah. So it was 13 to 15 at, uh, I think, going into halftime, right? Or at uh, least quarter. And then the penalties just racked up and screwed us. Like the one drive, they only, like, got maybe like 20 or 30 yards on a drive, but they started it at their own 10 because we gave them so many yards and penalties. You guys let Marcus Mariota have three touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, he sucks. Dude, I thought it was hilarious. It was like a stat. He threw a two-yard pass to like Henry or whatever who ran 75 yards for the touchdown. And they're like, oh, that ties his career-long um, touchdown pass. No, Mariota's terrible. But like... To think about the fact that he threw a two-yard screen and the guy ran 75 yards, and that counts as Mariota's 75-yard touchdown pass that sets his career long, like, 
that's no. I think it should be measured by how far they threw the ball. Well, that's where fantasy's messed up too, because like for pass interference, like you know, it's they'll like make a play on the ball, but they can't get it because they get a penalty. It'll be like a fifty-yard play where you're like he would have caught that, and that's what five, six points. And right. it's like this is this is crap. But yeah. no, Mariota, Mariota's tough. That that was um, it was him and uh, Jameis Winston. I remember it went one two like five years ago. Man, <laughs> man, that's tough. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, no, I, I still think the Browns will be okay. I mean, Tennessee isn't bad. I mean, they almost made the playoffs, so they're not bad. But yeah, but like, we were so in the game, and we like, on, like we were the better team. I think it's just the penalties killed us. We had like five personal fouls. That's insane. Yeah, five personal fouls, and I think two offensive uh, pass interference calls. That's crazy. Yeah, you guys play the uh, the Jets next week, right? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. I'll look it up. I also want people to know this. We're recording this on Sunday, so this is this is like live. This is still hurting. This is, yeah. I'm still like I just finished binge eating because I was so upset. Oh, you guys play the at, J- at the New York Jets Monday night next week. <laughs> oh. That's a must-win almost already. If you guys still want to be ten and six or whatever, depending on what the Steelers do this week. Yeah. And the Ravens look fantastic, so that's that's gonna be a tough Dude, division. But they also play the Dolphins. Yeah, Dolphins are <laughs> Dolphins are rough. <laughs> <laughs> but the seven, he hit what seven um, touchdown passes? No, six touchdown passes. Yeah. Lamar did. On total, yeah. And he was supposedly he couldn't throw. I thought he was going to be a bust, honestly. Yeah, it was interesting when they took him, and now what? Flacco is in uh, Denver right now, so oh, RG three got to play. Good for RG three. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah, Lamar Jackson a perfect passer rating: seventeen for twenty, three twenty four, and five touchdowns. Jesus. He only ran the ball three times. That's all he had to do. Wow, I loved having a. Tucker is my kicker, though. <laughs> <laughs> he got so many. He's a really good got kicker. I got 11 points for eight PATs and a field goal. <laughs> That's nice. That's great. So how big of an NFL fan are you? Like, just casual for everything? or? Yeah, just casual. I mean, love the Browns, but, like, just casual. So. Yeah, the Eagles almost lost today. Who? The Eagles? Yeah, they're playing. I looked, and they were. I mean, they they won thirty two twenty seven. They're playing the Redskins, who's like also yeah, supposed to be bad. Worse. And they were down seventeen nothing at, at the end yeah. of the first half. I was like, what, what what's happening? <laughs> yeah, no, that was close. We saw the updates. No, that's crazy. Yeah, Detroit's gonna win one and zero. There we go. Goodness. It was hilarious watching, just like watching and then seeing at the bottom of the screen how they do his updates. Like, oh shit. Lamar Jackson scored again. <laughs> it was like he threw another touchdown. Yeah, fifty nine to ten. That was the final there. Yeah, that was outrageous. Chiefs won. Yeah. Tyree Kill got injured that? though. I saw. Who? Tyree Kill. Oh really? Yeah. That that that's just straight up karma right there. What's his name? Quarterback got spatched. Um, he hurt his arm, right? Who? Who are you talking about? I don't Nick, remember who it was. Nick Foles? Or like today he got hurt. Today he got hurt, yeah. Uh, I'll look. I'll try to find it. Shoot, who was it? Was it? Uh, was it Kirk Cousins? Maybe. I don't know. Someone got spit off. And like, Sp- what, was, what is that? Explain. They just got nailed. Like, oh. some they were throwing, and someone came up under them as they were throwing, and just like picked them up and dropped them. That's tough. That's. I mean, that's why Andrew Luck quit, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll try <laughs> to find it. No, I mean, crazy, crazy week one. Yeah, definitely a crazy week one. <laughs> so our fantasy thing, like the punishment for the last place person, is uh, they have to wear like a flannel and pants and jump in uh, freezing Lake Erie. Oh my god. I don't think we have a punishment. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like joined in on the league with like some of my roommates. And so like last year the loser had to bleach their hair. Mm-hmm. But the kid who lost 
like lost and then just immediately went to basic training. So he like just shaved his head at basic and they're like, well, so much for bleaching your hair. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. I think it was a uh, Nick Foles from Jacksonville. It says he, uh, he threw a touchdown and got hurt and got hit. I can't see a video though. Yeah. He yeah. broke his collarbone. Oh shit. Yeah. That was right. <laughs> I mean, that, that's crazy, you know, week one with your uh, quarterback, you're like, all right, that's it, <laughs> we're done. Yeah. Well, that's why I was kind of worried about Mayfield because our like, guards just could not do anything to stop them from getting on the edge. Yeah, that's tough. The For offensive line, tackles, Michigan, so uh, Michigan had a bad offensive line one year, and it's just like you just can't do anything. Yeah, you're just screwed. So, um, yeah. Last topic here I want to talk about. We can go for however long about this. Uh, the president was uh, challenged today, primary. Oh, who? I, I don't. There's a guy that said there was a former South Carolina um, representative. Let me let me look it up here. I'll just type it in. Um, which is interesting. I can't remember the last time. I mean, maybe it's happened, you know, before, not too long ago, just before. Because I know Obama didn't get primaried, and I don't think Bush did either. Um, but, like, I, I don't know how long ago it's been. Yeah, uh, former uh -huh. Republican uh, Mark Sanford. Oh, I, don't, I didn't hear about this. Yeah, let's, let's look at the uh, Washington Post here. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's th there's the third. There's multiple. Oh, really? Um, quote, I think we need to have a conversation on what it means to be a Republican. I think that as a Republican Party, we have lost our way. Um, yeah. uh, I don't know. People just hate him so much. Former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld. Uh, is also in uh -huh. and former Illinois Congressman Joe Walsh. Okay, so there's three, three. challengers. <laughs> Trump's presidential campaign dismissed Sanford's entry into the race. Quote, irrelevant. <laughs> That's literally it, just as irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't see him losing. It's so hard to beat someone like that. I mean, for all, all the complaining, you know, um, well, and the fact that really the Republicans in 2016 didn't want him to win anyway, and then he won the primary anyway. And truthfully, I wanted um, Marco Rubio or Kasich, um, uh, growing up Republican. Um, and I think it certainly complicated matters, you know, between the right, left, Republican, whatever it is. But like, uh -huh. I, I don't think he's going to lose a primary. I mean, that'd be that'd be crazy because I think Republicans think he's doing a really good job. So. Yeah. No, I don't see him losing. And I, I still think – I don't trust any polls or anything I see anymore because, like, I saw a, a – granted, it's an Instagram screenshot of, like, some poll in Florida. I don't, I don't know what, like, the basis of the poll was or anything. But, like, it had every – all eight or whatever Democratic primary candidates beating Trump by, like, one or two percent. No way. Every one of them. That's just not going to happen. They, they all – it, it was like the scenario where, like, if each if each uh, primary candidate won and like went against Trump, all of them beat him by one or two percent. Like, are you serious? There's no way any of that's like the grant. There's like a f poll for Florida, but like, yeah, but uh, Florida's pretty red, so that's weird. Florida's like, yeah, Florida's like, like a swing state, though. Yeah, we just elected a, a Republican governor, though. Well, there we go, baby. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, because, you know, like, I'm not really a Trump supporter. You know that uh, I, I lean right. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, yeah, just, just speaking honestly, looking at it, like, is Joe Biden really going to beat Donald Trump? <laughs> like, Sleepy Biden? Come on. Sleepy Biden? That's what, he's, that's what they're calling him? That's funny. Yeah. Or Creepy Biden, one of the two. Yeah, I just... Yeah, I, I mean, it just... I don't know. It just I feel I still feel like I said it before, and it's still showing. Like I just can't believe they didn't like groom a successor or I know. someone to try to be. It, it doesn't because like, truly, in terms of incumbents, uh, presidents like Trump's probably one of the most beatable ever. In terms of you know, a lot of the country doesn't like him, and you would already have that. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Well, I th- it's just like it seems like everyone hates him, but in reality, it's like whoever screams the loudest seems the biggest. That's very true. And the people who do hate him scream louder than anyone ever will. So I really like. I really think, like, there's a lot more of a basis than what you're led to believe. That's a good, like, point about just life in general, because you see all this stuff anywhere, and you're right. It's like the the worst, I think there was something that Twitter said, like, the 90% of tweets come from 10% of users. So it's, like, <laughs> kind of just saying like that, some stat like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Though, but, yeah, it's just, like, the people who... Are the worst, and because in general, I think in a lot of cases for a lot of political issues, you know, a lot of any type of thing, a lot of people, there are a lot of reasonable people in the middle, but we're led to believe that there's always that there's everything's no two sides, yeah. and it's not. Yeah. And you and I have had many good conversations about a lot of things that where it's like you, you sit down and you're like, okay, look, you know, people want to boil it down to this or that, but there's a lot of nuances in these kind of things, yeah, um, and that's how the world works. I mean, for people that are. You know, coming up here and, and trying to figure out, you know, what what they want to do in life and, and all this other kind of stuff, how the world works. It is complicated. And I am saying that as a college student who hasn't had a 40-hour-a-week job, um, who hasn't, you know, had to go out and do a ton of things necessarily in communities. I've lived in multiple places. But other than that, like, just trying to do this, you know, get a degree. Like, it's – it's the world – is really complicated and you're not going to figure it all out and neither will anyone else really like you're, you're all just kind of swimming somewhere <laughs> <laughs> you're all just sitting there yeah and it, it's just cause I think there's such this tendency to figure you know know everything and like I certainly think there's you know you can get better you can learn more about yourself that kind of stuff and that's great and learn more about other cultures and all that but it's just like at some point you just gotta like bellow out just be like this this is what we're doing like this is this is yeah. life and you know and figure out what you like to do and just go do that you know exactly stop worrying so much about other people yeah uh, th- that's the other you know, thing too i mean don't be like an asshole and like block other people off but you know what i mean by that yeah it's like find your circle but it's like if you're you're, you're talking about twitter likes and like I, I heard someone yesterday just passing by like god that tweet most likes ever it's like when did that become yeah, like a thing. Yeah, like literally today I posted. I actually first time ever posting two pictures in one day. I posted two Instagram pictures today, and I was like, I was thinking, I was like, oh, I want to post these. I like, I think these are cool pictures. I like them. I want to post them. I was like, wait a minute, am I gonna get a lot of likes for this time? And I was like, do I really care though? Like, yeah. yeah, it's cool to like get a bunch of likes, but like. I hate that I want to get a bunch of likes, you know? No, definitely. And like I said earlier, like it's definitely something in our psychology that lead, let, wants us to be – we want to be wanted. We want to be social and, you know, and that kind of thing. But like my thing, you know, and like I said, I, I definitely used to be like this where I'd be like trying to get the most tweets or trying to seem the most funny. But now I just go out and – I'm not saying I, I'm a social all the time. But, you know, now I go out and just talk to people and I try not to look at my phone when I'm out and all this stuff just because yeah. – you know, I think you can learn so much from just talking to other people. I'm sure it's the same in Ohio State. It's so diverse here. It's it's so um, crazy the amount of uh, people you can meet and all this stuff and what you can learn, you know. And, of course, some people you're going to talk to and you're like, this is – they were dumb. This, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's dumb. a dumb conversation. Um, a lot of I, people like that. No, for sure. Um, There's a lot of good people too. For sure. Yeah, and I think just – you know, get out of there. You know the other thing, because you know I, I have I have anxiety. Like I, I was clinically diagnosed. Um, the thing that's been helping me a lot with a lot of these different things and like getting through work days and stuff is uh, a, a a little bit of CBD oil. Oh, you're doing that? Okay, it's not doing anything. It's not like a, illegal or anything. Oh no, I know, I know, I know. I'm I'm not like I'm just like curious. I personally, I would not have guessed that you would. So I. I talked about this a couple pods back, um, but I've been using it more frequently now. Um, I used to, I don't know, the definition of a migraine is weird, so I don't want to like trip, step on anybody's toes that have like serious migraines, but I'll get these uh-huh. one sided headaches um, sometimes that like nothing will fix. Like I even have tension oil for my head or something, or like pain doesn't, didn't work. 
Advil, whatever, you know, water. I'd eat, and I'm like, what do you want from me? <laughs> what two do you want me to do? Two squirts of CBD oil under the tongue, gone. Really? So, so isn't it just like the relaxing part of being high without the being high part, basically? Yes, yeah, so you're, you're definitely you're definitely not high. Well, um, I know. There's no, like, THC in it. Yeah, but. so that's the difference is that there's no THC. But, yeah, um, I started to uh, in the morning – because, you know, for me at least, part of my anxiety, like I have complex anxiety, you know about it, but I don't really want to get into it right now on the pod. Um, but in the morning, I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh my God, I have to do this and this and this and this has got to get done. In reality, it's not anything too much. Like I, I like it happened to me this morning and I was able to get it all done, obviously, all this stuff. But, you know, you wake up with that sense of panic and I feel like for college students, a lot of students are like that because they're like, oh my God, I got to do this assignment, take notes on this class and finish this quiz that just popped up out of nowhere and... Right. Um, that kind of thing. So, and then I'll just put, uh, three squirts in my, um, coffee and then, you know, I'm, I'm getting some work done. It, 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 it doesn't change me in any way, in any way or anything like that. Like you said, it's not, it's not high. It's not hallucinogenic. It's not anything like that. It just, it, it relaxes you. It, it truly does. Right. It helps me relax in the morning and I'm able to work through my stuff. And by one thirty today, I was like, Oh, okay. I guess I can take it, take a little bit of a break. Like I'm, I'm plowing through. So, um, I do it if I have coffee. I I, I put a couple squirts in. So and Katie's the one that uh, has it. So I feel bad for using her oil, but I think she sees that it really helps me. And I I, I gotta yeah. uh, find a good place to get it. So um, yeah, I, I really like it. And I think if you um, have anxiety, and obviously you don't need to do it every day. I, I don't do it every day. Um, mm-hmm. But if you're not too dependent stuff like that, and you start slow, like it will really help. And I think it helps for pain as well like joint pain stuff like that um anxiety I've, it definitely for me has helped headaches it's helped me so um mm-hmm. and for the headaches like i don't want to overrule placebo effect but like anxiety like it generally makes me feel better like i get less stressed about all my stuff and i'm able to work through it so well, that's good i'm glad it works and like just helping out yeah it's it's, it's really nice so i know it's, some people just associate with weed but it's it's completely different yeah no i know it's like it's not the same, but my – I was wondering, can it show up like as a false positive for a weed on drug test? Like I don't, I don't know. Well, I just got hired for a job, so I hope not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but also, no, I can look that up, but I don't think so. I know it's like from the same – I don't know exactly where it comes from, but I, I feel like those tests were THC, so it would make sense that um, – Right. I think if it's like uh, in-depth enough of a test – that I think it can like come up. I I, so I I don't know. I thought I like kind of read up on it, and it was kind of like, no, it's not going to. But we can't guarantee it won't. Basically, is what they said. Okay, so this is from uh, um, CBDAlliance dot dot org. Okay. okay, it's dot org. So that's that's pretty good. Good start. <laughs> Um, if a person is taking very large amount of CBD oil, hemp oil, they may trigger a positive drug test. The amounts would need to be in the 1,000 milligram to 2,000 milligram range daily. That's a lot. Oh, that's but a even lot. then, it's a false positive. So, like, I think what you can do too is dispute it, and then they can give you like a, a THC test. Right, right, right. Okay. I mean, I was just curious on that. Yeah. So, um, no, yeah, I, I, I would encourage some people because I think I think it's legal in all fifty states. I know it's legal here in Ohio. I checked before I started talking about it on the podcast because I didn't want hey. they want them to come knocking in. But yeah, no, my uh, neighbor, like back home, home, our neighbors, like our cousins, he does like the CBD gummies. Yeah, and he's got like all kinds of arthritis and like all kinds of stuff going on. So I mean, like, and he loves them. It helps him a lot too. And he was like trying to get me to take a bunch, and I was like, no, like. I don't want to take your stuff. Like, I'm okay. Like, I don't know. I'm just like, not that I'm saying it's bad, but I'm just wary of like that kind of thing. You no, know, I, get I, don't that. know I don't know why. Like, I don't really have a reason to be, but I'm just like, I just don't want to do it. Well, it's like, a, it's a new burgeoning field that, you know, um, doesn't have a ton of regulations. So that's why I'm saying like, I, I don't, yeah. I know Katie knows the, the, like a family friend that does that kind of stuff. So that's where, you know, uh, she'll help me out. But like that, that's, you know, cause it's tough because if you're just buying it from someone, you don't really know, um, where it's coming from or what's going on, how it's made. 
but that's why I think you know once you I, I think in the next ten years the CBD landscape will be very different. Oh yeah, well, and that's where we come back full circle. Where like you don't know where you're getting it from. Like, what if it's like lace or something? Not exactly. not, but I don't know. I don't know if you can lace CBD oil, but like the general concept. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's the same thing that I've always had an issue with weed. Weed's not legal here. It is in Michigan, I know. Um, but, like, that's always been my problem. I've never smoked weed. I've never seen weed. Um, because Not necessarily that I'm opposed to it or opposed to anyone that smokes it or whatever. But, like, if I'm buying it from Joe Schmo down the street, that scares me a lot. Yeah. Um, but if I were in a store in Colorado, you know, I'm not saying I would. Like but, an expensive, yeah. It's yeah, different. but that, that would give me a bit more... You know, confidence because it's in actually trying it that I wasn't going to die because I know it's regulated by the state. You know, like they have to meet all these agreements and stuff, and that's mm-hmm. so. Um, that that's what that's my thing with that, and I think CBD is the same thing. So, yeah. in that regard, it legally. <clears throat> yeah, I mean that makes sense. So, because like, and the, you know, because the the thing I think is like if alcohol is legal, um, weed. It, it would make sense could be legal even though we're a little behind on weed testing but like when you go and buy beer you never worry about where the alcohol comes from I mean obviously you can get right. people putting stuff in your drink but that's a different issue if you buy a can of Bud Light you are not going to die from that you're not going to get anything right. dr- any drugs in that so th- I think that's the next level is what we're missing right now with weed and CBD and whatever else yeah but in 10 years I bet we'll get there yeah I bet weed will be like more fully legalized way sooner but i think also what's going to happen is like the regulation is going to fall behind the legalization and there's going to be some sort of problem that oh yeah yeah that first five years shit like we didn't think about this kind of thing that pops up you know yeah the first five years when everyone's just trying to buy for market and you can see it now everyone's trying to in some of these states um yeah, I, I definitely think, though, eventually, you know, in the next 10 years, easily, I think it'll be federally legalized. And I think that's the right choice, but you're right. There's going to be some more hiccups. And there always is with this stuff. You never think about it, and yeah. all of a sudden, bam, it's here. And yeah. Can't think of everything beforehand, you know? No, no, exactly. No. I, I, even on my daily basis, I, I, I just encounter yeah. stuff that happens. I'm like, well, here we are. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I think it'll be really interesting to see uh, where that goes in the future. And I definitely think, you know, I mean, we're both 20 right now. So by the time we're 35, like that's that's all I think that's all going to be figured out, which will be really interesting for us looking for, you know, work coworkers and employees and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And that's also the thing, like, is if you're in a state where it's legal and you smoke it, there's a lot of jobs that are still like, no. And well, then if you get a job in a different state where it is illegal, even worse. You know? Well, I think my dad, uh, obviously, you know, he his office is in Colorado, and he says there's three weed stores a mile from his place, from the headquarters. <laughs> like, I, I know he doesn't yeah. smoke, but, like, uh, it, it's a reasonable thing, you know, instead of – and once again, the comparison comes up, and I, just, I don't know the effects of marijuana on productivity and stuff like that. But I know certainly, it, you know, when you have – when you drink, if you have two beers, like that's not going to severely hamper your um, yeah. work. You might even more be more social, actually. So, like, if you, you know, there's the thing where you go for lunch with the work guys and you come back a couple beers in, you know, and you get work done. I don't know if it works like that at all. Um, I think some people probably at, at home are like saying, like, yeah, definitely I can do that. Other people are like, no, you idiot, that's not how this works. Um, yeah, I just so wonder so. figuring that out is going to be kind of interesting too. Depends on their tolerance and stuff. Exactly. There's some people who are like high all day, all the time, and it's like, how do you function? Yep. It's true. I don't don't know. I really don't. Drugs are crazy. (laughs) Bottom line, drugs are whack. Yeah, drugs are whack. Be careful. Drugs, kids. (laughs) Yeah. That's that's the advice here. That's the ending advice. (laughs) Dare to resist drugs. (laughs) Matt, this has been wonderful. I think we covered a lot. Uh, we'll definitely have you on again in the future whenever uh, our times open up again like this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, fantastic. Uh, have a good rest of the school year. Uh, just remember, I hate Ohio State with a passion still. Um, I love, love you, you but hate the school. Um, and I hope you lose the rest of your football games. Oh, thanks. I'll do my best to make them lose for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Love you, buddy. I right, Love you, too. Thanks for having me on.
Thank you for listening to the Assist Podcast. If you like the show, go drop a five-star rating. That really helps us keep the show going. If you want to stay updated with all the podcast episodes, hit the subscribe button and also go follow our Twitter, which is at Assist underscore podcast, and our Instagram, which is now the Assist Podcast. And you can write any emails, uh, any suggestions you have to theassistpod at yahoo.com, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.